Hi guys and welcome to this week's vlog. It's all about this thing. It's a 15 stop filter and the question is, do we as photographers need one of these in our bags? Right, so before we get set up and take some pictures mid-afternoon, let's talk about the reasons why we should have one in our bags. Well, obviously without stating the obvious, if you're into smoothing out water and streaking clouds, for instance, if you like doing that with a six stop or a 10 stop filter, then the reason why I've bought a 15 stop filter is not so that I can try and take the similar shots, but over a 15 minute period, it's just simply so I can take a two or a four minute exposure during a very, very bright sunny day when a six stop and a 10 stop filter clearly isn't powerful or strong enough well proof is in the pudding really so I'm guessing the best bet for us is to set it up let's take a couple of shots in various locations in the middle of a bright 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 sunny day let's look at the results together and then obviously you know you can make uh, an informed decision of whether you think you should have one in your kit bag or not so let's talk you through the setup process. First of all, camera on a very sturdy tripod. There's a bit of a breeze today, but nothing too much. Compositionally wise, it's a very simple shot. I've got a lake that I'm shooting across, nothing in the foreground except the lake. In the background, we've got some beach huts and we got um, a little bit of a blue sky with very wispy clouds. Over a long exposure, we're gonna flatten this water out but how much movement we see in the clouds, I'm not entirely sure. Right, okay, so let's get things set up. Now, I use a Lee Foundation kit, so let's just throw that on there, and I've got a Lee 15 stop filter, but of course this setup is appropriate to uh, whatever filter system that you currently use. Right, switch my camera to manual, and before I get going, I'm gonna set my settings normally as I would do on uh, a shoot in the middle of the day. Uh, ISO 100 F11 is a good place to, uh, to start. Let's use the live view on the back so I can see what I'm doing. Let's use my glasses as well. Let's activate my light meter. And uh, okay, well that was quite fortunate because 250th of a second gives me a perfect exposure. Let's pop on my histogram just to double check that. My histogram is centered and slightly to the right of center, but nothing is peaking. So I've got no overexposure there at all. Right, okay, so not finished yet. It's a very bright sunny day and it looks like I'm gonna have to try and bring some of that light down in the sky. So I'm going to, going to use a 0.9 soft grad filter. I'm going to put the soft grad filter in the slot furthest away from the camera body and camera lens. Looking on the live view, dropping it down. So it's just over the horizon and that looks fine to me except it's it's now reduced the light down ever so slightly so i'm just going to open my aperture i'm going to leave my shutter speed at 250th of a second and for very good reason because i'm going to use my lee it's my lee app my lee filter app it's free to download even if you don't use a lee filter system it's a fantastic system to use and it's completely free all you need to do is simply tell the app that I'm using my 15 stop filter and flick through the settings and I can see that if I if I achieve a 250th of a second shutter speed that will offer me a two minute exposure if I can achieve 125th of a second then that will offer me a four minute exposure so I'm going to go to 250th of a second so that'll give me a two minute exposure so my target is to set my camera up without the filter on without the 15 stop filter on and try and achieve a 250th of a second shutter speed now there's no point guessing it it's a science so why not use the tools and especially because they're free but every time you use your 15 stop filter just remember if you like a two minute exposure try and achieve a 250th of a second shutter speed as simple as that that way you don't even have to bother getting your app out of your pocket right compositionally everything is perfectly fine and i'm now going to focus so set my lens to autofocus I'm going to focus on the beach huts, which 
is equivalent to infinity. There's nothing in the foreground. If something was in the foreground that's of interest that would draw the viewer's eye in, then I would have focused a third of the way into the frame. But as it stands now, it's only water and the water is going to be flattened out like an ice skating rink, so there's no need to worry. Okay, so let's just confirm then. My ISO at the moment is ISO 100, my aperture is F9 and my shutter speed is 250th of a second. Simple as that. So, ready and raring to take my picture. Plug in your intervalometer, plug in your timer, unless you've got a timer built into your camera. Lots of cameras do nowadays. And like I say, I'm using a Lee 15 stop filter. Let's give it a little wipe because of the finger marks. Now, um, the Lee filter system that I'm using has a little seal around it. And it's really important that the seal aims towards the camera lens, gonna drop that in, and it's in the slot closest to the lens, and it drops right down there, so that now forms a seal, so we don't have any issues with light leaking in. Now, let's take the picture. To enable us to achieve a two minute exposure, my intervalometer is already set to a two minute exposure. Set your camera to bold mode. Remember what your settings were and double check them. F9, ISO 100, and now the timer really is down to your intervalometer that's already set at two minutes. And press start. There you go. It's now taking a shot over a two minute exposure. So another shot, quite interesting. Got some old groins, half in the water, half out of the water. Again, it's, it's not a special shot. It's just really, just to see what a two minute and a four minute exposure looks like right in the middle of the day. And you can tell it's a bright sunny day because I'm looking directly into the sunshine now as I'm looking at the camera, as you can probably tell. You can tell with that shadow on my face there. Uh, so once again, it's all about flattening that water out and streaking the clouds in the sky. Having said that though, I shot there with a two minute and a four minute exposure and I can't really see any movement in the clouds at all. Really, really whispery clouds, really high up and they just don't seem to be moving at all. So much so to my right hand side, your left hand side across there, there's a, a big crane formation or cranes plural formation and I shot a four minute and an eight minute exposure with my 15 stop filter to see if we could get some blurring of the clouds behind them. I haven't seen the pictures yet. Obviously it's too bright for me to see them. I'd rather, I don't chimp anyway. I'd rather wait till I get back. So I'm very interested to find out what they actually uh, turned out like. Middle of the day, bright, bright sunny day. Camera, four minute, eight minute exposure. The setup is exactly the same as it was earlier. Yeah, interested. I'm enjoying this experiment today. I really am, really, really am. Personally, I love flattening the water out. I do, I call it an ice skating rink when I do it. It might not be uh, something that you're interested in. I totally get that. Uh, but also streaking the clouds as well is something that I love doing. Even if it's a case of shooting up at a building uh, with the building nice and stagnant and all the streaky clouds behind it. Clearly I can't demonstrate that today, which is a real shame, but uh, I'm, you, you'll know the pictures I'm talking about anyway.
So to summarize then, I suppose at the end of the day, if you like the results a six stop and a 10 stop filter will offer you, you know, when the lighting conditions are a lot less, as in sunrise and sunset, then certainly a 15 stop filter, you know, could well be up there on your list of things to purchase. I mean, not everybody can get out when the light's more favorable, especially in the summer. I mean, sunrise at the moment is like 20 to five, sunset is half past nine at night. So, you know, at the end of the day, not everybody can afford the time to get out and about. So therefore, you know, a good 15 stop filter will cost you about a hundred pound and if that then affords you the opportunity to go out in the middle of the day whether it's you know in the summer or whether it's in the winter and still take the same you know sea smoothing shots and cloud streaking shots then i think a good 15 stop filter is probably likely to be high on most photographers lists but of course the whole thing is subjective but at the end of the day you know it's got to be on your list if you like these kind of pictures Right, so that's it. Thanks for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up and uh, leave a comment down below whether you think based on you know, the information I've offered on this video, you're gonna go out and purchase a 15 stop filter or maybe you already own a 15 stop filter. Obviously it's not to everybody's cup of tea, but let me, let me know down below in the comments. And if you're new to this channel, then well, this is the sort of thing I do on a weekly basis. So be sure to go ahead and subscribe as all the good vloggers say. Although why I just said that, I've no idea. Thanks for watching guys, cheers, bye.